Howdy folks, I'm out here to talk to you today about this in the garden greenhouse. We're getting ready to tear it down. Uh, we're going with something entirely different and we need to get this out of the way to make room for what we're going to put up. Uh, before we do that, I wanted to talk about the lessons that I have learned with this thing over the course of the three years that I've been using it and what I would do differently if I were to build another one and start from scratch. Uh, one of the first things I would do is I would not use a solid one single piece of greenhouse plastic. Both sides and both ends is one solid sheet. We draped it from the back side over to the front and then pulled around the ends to box everything in. Uh, generally I'm out here by myself during the day doing this while everybody else is at school or work and to try and get this big sheet of plastic over this thing by myself was a lot of work uh, if you're doing this by your own i can't say that i recommend trying to do one solid sheet of greenhouse plastic what i would do different is here at the top right here i would make a seam and attach the canopy and then the curtains by themselves. I would not do it in one piece. Uh, and by the way, all of these boards on here are treated lumber. I started off with one by two pine lumber and it barely made it a season, especially down here at the bottom where it comes in contact with the water and the soil. Those pieces there at the bottom to allow me to roll up the sides, it it didn't work. I, it made it one season when it was falling apart and I had to replace it. All these boards on the outside are treated and I went with a deck board. And uh, I did that because it's thicker. It's like six fifths of an inch thick. I forget. Anyway, it, it's a little bit thicker than a normal one by and it doesn't split out as bad when you start putting the screws through the end through it. Um, on the ends, nope, before I get to the end, I'll show you what I've got here. What I did, the way that we have set this up to close, it works, but if you're coming in and out frequently, it puts a lot of holes in your plastic and I'm hoping you can see that. I have put the repair tape on it to try to make it last a little bit longer but when I was coming out here every day to water and tend to things it it tore up quickly. Uh, this system and it, this is what David Gilmore shows you LDS prepper. You take a three-quarter inch piece of PVC, you cut a portion of it off, and then you can just stick a half inch piece directly into it. If you're not going to be using the door much, it works and is inexpensive and effective. I would do it differently if I were to do this again. Um, to explain how I would do the door, and yes, I'm making lots of noise. And forgive my mess in the greenhouse, I haven't cleaned it out yet this year. Uh, to do the ends differently, I would also form up my A-frame differently. My two befores in my A-frame are in the box. I would move those to the outside of these horizontal four befores. I'd move them here where this two by is. That would give me a surface to secure the plastic, the curtain to. And it would also get that 4x4 out of the grow box so that if you put in the mini hoop house, you don't have to fight with the plastic to get it around and it would be just a little bit easier for you. These two befores that you're seeing on the outside of my building here, those are buried about a foot and a half into the ground and these were added on afterwards. This sheet of plastic, this curtain, is 30 feet long and in the wind the wind caught that thing and was just really really shaking it and really working the plastic and i was afraid that it was going to tear i added these two by fours and then was able to 
take some of that deck board that I'd ripped down and screw through the plastic into that two before from those deck boards. And instead of having one 30 foot piece of plastic, it gave me three 10 foot pieces of plastic. And I don't have quite the, the, the pressure on the plastic on the ends that way. And that's gonna help, I think, to make that plastic last a little bit longer. Uh, something else that I've added into my greenhouse is these two befores here, right here. And I showed this in another video. These are at the five foot mark between the four befores and the A-frame, these horizontal four befores. And that's going to keep this two before along the outside where all of my PVC arches are secured to. When you add this PVC, it really bows that two before out. And it was out as much as a foot and a half beyond what it's intended to be. Uh, we got a rope on it, pulled it back together, was able to put these two befores in here, and it took that bow out from the arches. It also is gonna give you a little bit more so, uh, support for this wire when you're growing a vertical crop, and it's gonna help to hold the weight of everything that you've got in here. My arches. See my pipe insulation that I put in there? You have to have something between the plastic and the PVC. The PVC will off gas and it will cause that greenhouse plastic to deteriorate a little faster than normal and then you're gonna end up replacing it. I put that stuff on there. I wouldn't do it again. It was probably 50 or $60 to get all of that pipe insulation. <clears throat> As the greenhouse plastic on the canopy moves, it will roll is going to roll that insulation and that slit on the bottom there would go to the top and then it would come down. I was forever having to put it back on there. Uh, you could put a piece of tape on it, I assume, and, and hold it in place. But the sun is really causing these things to break down and, and to fall apart quickly. You might get a year or two out of them, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't last. And $60 for two years of use, I don't think is ideal. What I would do if I were to do this again, is to simply paint, paint the PVC, get a good exterior paint, coat it, and, and be done with it. The paint would be cheaper, and it is certainly going to last longer in the long run. Uh, for the doors, what I would do differently with my doors, oh, oh, busted my butt, I would move these four before posts again out to the end here and yeah I know we're looking in the sun forgive me and build let me come back out with that four before which is here I would move it out to this point and have it flush with the ends of the grow box and that way you could build a wall with a doorway in the middle of it, put a door in there and have a normal door that you could walk in and out of every day and it would not tear up any plastic. Uh, you could secure the plastic on the end a little better that way. And in the summer months, when it's time to open it up, you could just take the whole thing down and set it in a barn or a shed somewhere, get it out of the way. Uh, it would be a little more work, a little more lumber, so you could have a little more cost. But in the long run, you're not going to tear up your plastic like what I have been doing here. And I have patched this plastic trying to make it last. I got three years out of it, but I'd like to get more. Um, here at the bottom, where I roll up my curtains, that is made out of that same deck board. I've ripped it down, and I've got a piece on the inside, a piece on the outside, sandwich the plastic between it, and screw the two pieces together. I use that to roll up the sides. It's heavy. I can't do it by myself. I thought I was going to be able to, to manage it. I, I can't. So I would do one of two things. I would either narrow that board up. I think I'm about two and a half inches. I would narrow it to reduce the weight, or I think it might be better to use a, a length of larger diameter PVC pipe 
and all over YouTube you can see the handy little cranks that people have to roll the sides up. I think I, I would go that route and just forget this, this wood down here. It, it's heavy and I think that you could do it better with a piece of PVC. Glue some PVC together to get a 30 foot length, put a crank on one end and go to town. Uh, corners and you can see my patch here figure out something to cover the lumber here a little bit better I was in a rush to get this done because my help was supposed to be here to put the plastic on and I didn't sand the corners or anything round them off to keep it from wearing on the plastic and when this 30 foot sail the first night we caught wind because that's what it is it's a big sail when that wind caught it boy it, it stressed all of the corners badly and I had holes pretty quick in my greenhouse plastic there um, so to do different I would take myself a sander just a little cheap electric sander and sand those corners over to make it smooth surface and then cover it with something that's going to protect the greenhouse plastic from from ripping through uh, overall I, i'm glad that i built this greenhouse we got a lot of food out of it because we had it typically we got about another oh eight to twelve weeks growing every year while we had it up uh, and of course that's for hardy crops we did have tomatoes until the second week of November in 2017 out here and we are in uh, zone 5b it gets pretty cold our first frosts are typically in October and we were able to keep those tomatoes in there alive until mid-November uh, the kale and everything we had until December and it, it was doing well it got really cold and unfortunately it died off uh, we have not added any supplemental heat to this design. I suppose that you could do it. You could double up the plastic if you wanted to, and that might work for you. And I kind of kind of teased at it at the beginning. We are going to put up a greenhouse that we intend to be able to grow in year-round. It's going to be a 20-foot by 44-foot greenhouse, and we're putting a heat sink of gravel underneath it and it's going to act as a thermal battery it's going to collect heat during the day and at night it's going to return that heat back into the greenhouse and we should be able to keep it at operating temperature or at growing temperature year round with just a fan blowing uh, the fan is going to take the air from the peak of the greenhouse and blow it down percolate it up through the rock and return it back into the greenhouse. We're pretty excited to get started and I hope in the next two weeks we're going to start that process. So stay tuned for more videos in the future because we will be recording that. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions be sure to let me know in the comment section below.